everyone and welcome back to Just What Can A GP Do? In this episode, we'll be talking to Dr. Usman, or Dr. Uz as he likes to be known, about his career path in sports medicine and also about his podcast. As always, if you found the video useful, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and turn the notification bell on so you know when I'm going to release my next video. I'm from Liverpool myself, so I'm outside of Liverpool on the Wirral. So I obviously conventionally did my A-levels, took a gap year, and I, went to Le I got into Leeds Medical School. I come from a family of medics, so uh, my mum and dad are both medics, my uncles are medics. You know, I've, had that, I've been lucky enough where a lot of all my family are medics, but they all work in the hospital setting, so that's all I knew growing up, you know, to become a hospital doctor. So I went to Leeds Medical School. I wasn't the best medical student. I was probably one of the worst medical students. I never went in for placements. I was quite lazy, you know, um, just doing everything I could to get, to get by. And again, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, there was a few career options. I always liked elderly medicine because I found that part of medicine quite rewarding. Um, it was quite multifaceted as well. You treated treating them physically and treating their social circumstances as well. And I just enjoy sitting down and talking to a lot of them, you know, on placements. With myself, I started boxing. Uh, I took up boxing in 2010. Um, I started competing as an amateur. Um, had a few amateur contests, you know, had a few amateur fights. So in itself, boxing and sports played a huge part in, you know, my physical health, my mental health. Um, putting me in a good space. I've started to fight at you know amateur contests or go to go to boxing shows. I'd always see a doctor there. I'd be like, oh, that's I did because you, you know you don't think mm. these these sporting games or these sporting events have doctors. You know you think mm. they're just paramedics there. I thought like, that looks like a pretty cool job. You know someone he is getting paid to essentially come and watch a boxing game. So I thought, oh, that's cool. But I wanted to still keep my options open. You know my initial aim was. I mean my goal was to always finish university, do FY1, FY2, and maybe do sort of go down the medical training route and do elderly medicine. I then started my FY1 and FY2, and I just, I, I didn't really enjoy doing the night shifts. I didn't enjoy working <laughs> weekends. I didn't enjoy like giving up my Christmas and my New Year's when all your friends are out. It wasn't until I started my FY2 year, because that's when I had my first GP job, because for those, for those non-medically trained, the foundation year one and foundation year two, we, we, you've got to do four months rotations of different jobs. You know, you'll do a surgical job, a medical job. You might work four months in a GP. You might work four months in a psych job, uh, a children's ward. So obviously for my foundation year one, I did sort of four months in a psych ward and then the rest were in hospital. When I started my foundation year two, I, my first job was in a GP setting because my supervisor was really nice. So he said, okay, you're thinking about hospital medicine. Would anything about GP interest you? And I was like, yeah, it would. But I explained to him, I was like, oh, this doctor, you know, because I, I box myself. And whenever I've been going to boxing shows, you know, to spectate or when I fought at them, I've noticed there's a doctor there. What it, is, is, can you be a sports doctor? And he was like, yes, you can. So we explained that there are a lot of times where GP, you can become a GP and you can do extra work at the side. So he put me in touch with a doctor that worked for the Everton Academy side at the, at the time. And I remember I shadowed him for a morning to go and do some concussion assessments because every year uh, players have to have a concussion assessment. Um, so from then on in, I went, I, went, I went to shadow him. So I was like, this is pretty cool. And I, I remember I went, to I went to the Great Britain um, headquarters in Sheffield to shadow one of the, sort of the main doctors there. So I was like, this seems, and then obviously when you're shadowing these people, you're sort of finding out a little bit about their job and, you know, what, what the job entails and how they got there. So I was like, this sounds pretty cool, um, I'll, but I'll still keep an open mind. So my next job after that was a medical, a medical senior house officer job, and I didn't really enjoy it. I did, like, the night, it was the, again, it was the nights, the weekends, you know, you, you, so after that, I made my mind up. I was like, you know what, I'm going to become a GP because... Not only can I fit my sport, you can do the sports stuff at the side. I enjoyed, I enjoyed being a GP. I enjoyed using the 10 minutes or the 15 minutes to, to really build a rapport with the patient, find out more about them, which you don't really get to do in hospital. Um, you're sort of part of a team, which is completely different. And then it went from there, really. Um, and then after that year, I started to plot how, you know, how am I going to become a GP with a specialist interest in sports medicine? 
that's when it really started. That's when I started to put, I think, everything into motion from there. When people say being a GP is easy, mm. no, it's no, it's. I did a recent podcast episode on life as a GP, and I'm sure you can attest to this. In 10 minutes, you have to find out. I was explaining this to my wife as well, who isn't a medic. You have to explain, you have to find out for the patient why the patient has come in there, for what reason, on this specific day. And a lot of them, they, will, they won't have one problem, they'll have multiple problems. Mm. And you essentially have to elicit, you know, what the issue is, um, rule out any red flag signs and symptoms a little bit of their social history and then manage them and do everything in 10 minutes. Like you, you can, you can take as long as you want. I mean, it's really up to yourself if you want to finish on time, but it's just so different to, to hospital medicine. You know, that I feel that you sort of, and especially with COVID as well, COVID has made the GP job even more difficult. Hard to build a rapport with the patient as well oh, yeah. over a telephone call, very hard to build a rapport over the, over a video call especially when you've got them face to face you can tell their body language when they're sad when you when you when you explain something to them you can you can fully grasp it if you can understand it or not again you can see how serious the issue is like a, a lump in the groin it's so difficult and, and i almost explained it's like initially before the video consultation came when it was just telephones it's like doing your job blindfolded and handcuffed like it's 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 really really difficult hospital medicine and gp being a gp present difficulties in sort of both mm -hmm. you get difficulties in both sort of um domains really there's countless amount of people who wanted to become a surgeon and they even started their core surgical training and they finished it gave it up and become gps and these are saying the same people who are slating gp in medical school because you have to think about the length of training you know after f after foundation year one and two you've got well, they've changed it now for core medical training. It's three years, and then you've got five years as a registrar. So it's eight years until you're on a, I'm not trying to say money is everything, but a, a consultant type wage, that independence. Again, if you want to have a family, again, this takes me back. If um, if I was single, I didn't have a wife, I would have thought about A&E training again, because it's, it's, it's four years, because I think that would have fit. But it would have been really, it would have been a really difficult four years. Mm. A lot of those A&E regs do not look very happy. <laughs> it's it's mm. it's a very very hard rater. Yeah, so it, it it does depend on what you want and how passionate you are about um, mm. surgery or medicine. But I always say, just give yourself a few years of doing those shifts. If you if you love something and you're passionate about it, no amount of money or anything mm. from that will change. So you, you're doing something you love essentially i had this vision in like september october i was like i'll get my exams out the way i'll get my akt mm -hmm. dsa out the way and i look into it because as you know with, with your sort of really good youtube channel which i've checked out everything nowadays is everything is online a lot of patients mm -hmm. are turning social media to youtube to podcasts mm -hmm. um to almost fill fill their day you know going on a walk going on a run going on a drive they might want to tune into a podcast to listen into how I treat eczema or how I manage depression or, you know, um, even career advice, you know, how I can become a sports doctor. Mm. So, and then it's not only the podcast and the YouTube channels, but it's also YouTube as well. You know, you've seen a lot of uh, infographics. It tells you how to, it tells you like the signs and symptoms of IBS or so, something like that. So, and I, and I almost say that, especially like with yourself doing the YouTube channel, being a GP, um you carry the same skills you would as as a youtube host or a podcast you essentially have to sit in front of the patient you have to listen to the patient show empathy listen to them ask questions ask open-ended questions then close the questions down it essentially helps your skills you know being a podcast host and interviewing people helps your skills being a, i think being a better gp you know, being a being a, a, a clinician you have to sit there and you so yeah it came really from there really so i was like I wanted to use some of the contacts I had in the sports world. And it was really hard starting up. Like some people would charge for interviews. Some people wouldn't get back mm. to you. But I was like, I'll do a few podcast episodes just talking about random stuff. So I did the first one about, I mean, it was Ramadan at the time. So I talk, talked about how you can stay active and healthy in Ramadan. Did one about a link between music and athletic performance. And then I was lucky. And then after some of the contacts I built up in the, the sports world, which I'll, I'll get back to after the podcast, um, just interviewing them really and sort of finding out about their, their life and podcasts are so popular nowadays that a lot of the guests that I've had on have been, have, have been on podcasts themselves. So it's not only athletes. I mean, I've, I've talked, there's, there's an episode where I've talked about um, 
to an undercover police officer. PTSD is very common in mm. people who've lived, not only undercover police officers, but also people who've lived criminal lives as well, you know, are now informed. Mm. Mm. Um, talk to a stand-up comedian about his career. And again, mental health is common in um, stand-up comedy. You know, we saw um, Robin Williams interview the, the detective who was behind the Biggie and Tupac murder as well. I took inspiration from the Joe Rogan podcast. He, he's like a comedian. He'll basically get a guest on, just getting them to talk and... Like I said, I'll try to find a medical link there, but if I don't, it's just an excuse to talk to someone, really. I've done, we've, we've posted about 34 episodes up. It's the Dr. Ruth podcast. It's available to listen to on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. Social media is at Dr. Ruth's podcast. But yeah, so it's, it's just, it's, it, I think there's something up there for everyone. You know, if you want to find something medical related, like the last two episodes of Life as a GP and How to Become a Sports Doctor, there's obviously interviews with undercover police officers, stand up comedians professional mm. athletes and, and it is it takes you back to if you love doing it you shouldn't have to worry about the subscribers or the numbers and if it's going to take off and stuff like that mm. so um no no i i enjoy it i'm enjoying it so far for the sports medicine i just want to touch upon that really so like i said i've i've worked i've worked in football for a season for everton ladies uh and i currently work in rugby league for, for witness Vikings and I work in the amateur boxing but in regards to sports medicine I did it w as a GP with a specialist interest in sports at the side but there is a four-year training program which you can do and you can do that after you finish your GP training or A&E training or core medical training but it is you know obviously you, you're registered for four years it's unbanded but if you want to get into this it's about just building contacts really messaging people on LinkedIn uh, mm. don't be afraid to you know if you are on a GP rotation there will be a GP that knows someone who works in the sports field and that's the thing really shadowing people building mm. contact shadowing people and from then on in you know it's it's also useful to do um, a diploma so I've just got to finish off a diploma from it's like a distance learning diploma from Bath University so if you are serious about doing the sports medicine building up your contacts because when you build up your contacts that's when you'll find out, you know, how, how I got this job or how I got that job. Um, and certain sports, you know, I know it's a bit difficult in football, football and rugby to get into instantly, but there are certain level sports where they need a doctor. It's, it's really hard to explain sort of thing because it's not your conventional sort of training route. Mm -hmm. It is about who you know. But I think a really, really good point is to be proactive and message mm -hmm. these people on, on LinkedIn, Instagram, on social media, and, you know, say, listen, I'm, I'm, I want to come and shadow you. And when you are there, asking them how they got to that, to, to that journey, really. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and learnt loads. If you found the video useful, then give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next episode.